In Wales, around 200 people are currently waiting for an organ transplant. If I stop the dialysis, it'll probably last a fortnight before I could possibly die. On average, someone dies every 11 days on the waiting list. <laughs> You'll have to go to the yeah, You've got to do it. You're going to die. Last year, Wales led the way in the UK and changed the law to presumed consent. It's a landmark day for Wales, but it's a landmark day for people who are waiting for transplants. Now, it's assumed that we are all potential donors when we die. Let's get this. Unless we opt out or express such wishes to our loved ones. A single donor can change the lives of so many who are waiting for the call for the gift of life. Unless something drastic happens, um, I'm going to have my transplant. With unprecedented access to the transplant teams at the University Hospital of Wales, this series follows the incredible journey from one person's death to others receiving the greatest gift. Thirty-two-year-old Kimberly Chard has cystic fibrosis, a life-limiting condition which affects her lungs. <coughs> She's currently on the waiting list for a double lung transplant. Maybe I'll finish that later. How often do you have to, um, to do that? Um, I do a couple of different nebulizers a day, so I do about six times a day. Um, including antibiotics that help me get the mucus off my chest. <clears throat> it's, it's pretty much exhausting and it's, it's just knackering and every day is a chore, but hopefully I'm going to have a transplant and I'll be able to breathe again. We just need that call now. What if, you know, I don't make it or I get taken off the list? We've had to talk about all that. It's not easy, but you have to do it. Um, I don't want to be able to talk about that. I'd rather plan things, I'd rather plan my future. But I'm not in the position of just thinking about that right now. So it is vital that we get the call for a transplant as soon as possible. <coughs> Kimberly's been on the waiting list for 10 months. In order for her transplant to go ahead, someone has to donate their organs after they die. A year ago, organ donation in Wales changed. By law, we are now all potential donors unless we opt out. In the countdown to the change in legislation, the Welsh Government organised roadshows across the country to help spread the message. Are you aware of the change in the, the organ donation law coming yes. into effect? Thank you for these. It's information on the new organ donation act that's coming through next week Thank on the new opt-out system. It gives you all the information there. For Robin Simpson, this is more than just publicity. I actually had a thought. I could be giving to a leaflet to someone. I could have their kidney. Bizarre. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got, I'm on a uh, kidney transplant waiting list. Oh, are you? Yeah, uh, and I work for the health department, so I, I, I volunteer to get involved. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah so. to put my bit back. Yeah, my son donated. Did he? Oh, right, OK. Died, so Richard's heart recipient received a gold medal in the transplant games. Did he? Did he? Yeah, he yeah. sent it to him. Oh, that's fantastic. So how long have you been on transplant Two and a half days? years on the waiting list. You're lucky in a way. If you're going to have an organ failure, kidneys wouldn't have because you've got the yeah, dialysis yeah. and you've got the dialysis yeah, to, go to, to, for, to, to keep you going. You know, with, with a heart, lung or, or liver, yeah, there's no alternative. No, no. Hi, can I give you one of these? With presumed consent now law, everyone nearing death in a hospital environment in Wales is a potential organ donor. The most seriously ill patients will inevitably spend time on the critical care unit. 
Yeah. Yeah. Consultant intensivist Chris Hingston is the regional clinical lead for organ donation in Wales. Okay, so we should be able to wake him up today then, hopefully. Fine. A lot of our patients get better, but one in five of them you know, won't survive their intensive care stay. And that's really where organ donation comes in as a part of usual rather than unusual uh, end of life care. So it's really our job to approach all patients uh, about organ donation. Sixty-seven-year-old Bill has been admitted to the ward following a stroke. His daughter Karen and family are with him. They're not 100% sure what happened, whether there was a bleed to the brain first before the fall, whether the bleed to the brain caused the fall, but he fell backwards and uh, cracked his head and didn't really regain consciousness from that point. My dad, he was funny, he was kind, he had budgies when I was growing up and liked yo-yos. <laughs> Since his admission, Bill's condition has worsened. The doctor showed us an x-ray of a normal brain and then they showed, and they showed an x-ray of my dad's. And you could see the damage. And you could see it wasn't going to get better. Whilst Bill continues to be cared for on the unit, the medical team will find out what his end of life wishes are. Harefield Hospital, Middlesex. And cystic fibrosis patient Kimberly has had an early Christmas present. We had a call from the transplant coordinators at nine, nine o'clock last night to come to the hospital because they found a matching donor. It's a good match and unless something drastic happens, um, I'm going to have my transplant. Kimberly's lung transplant took the surgeons 10 hours to complete. Without it, she may only have had months to live. Kimberly's now undergoing intensive physiotherapy and husband Luke has been by her side throughout her recovery. I think on the first day, I said she could do uh, sort of 10 to 15 steps. She did 45, so... <laughs> yeah. She's doing all right, yeah. The lung transplant has transformed the young couple's lives. <laughs> Feels like a lifetime ago. I know. I'm, you know, just gasping, isn't it? Gasping mm. for breath. Just seeing myself, hoping it would happen, and the relief that it has happened. So, <laughs> crying both times. <laughs> you know, everything I've been through, all the pain and everything, it's all worth the future I'm going to have. <clears throat> Yeah, a person deciding to to give such a gift when they're gone 
it's just just such a selfless gift it means the world to me and to other people that lives have been saved to Someone who's still waiting for his life to change is Robin. He has kidney failure and has been waiting almost three years for a transplant. Robin's treatment involves dialysis to remove the toxins from his body. He's able to manage this himself, even at work. You want to see the petrol? That's where the catheter goes into my peritoneum and ends up over here somewhere. And that's, and that's where it drains in and out. And nice little port, they call it, where you put the, the tube in. You just take that off. And that's it. That goes all the way into my peritoneum. Shut to that. Right, that's the drain bag. That's where all the previous two litres I put in this morning comes out and uh, that's it now for 25 minutes. All, all the usual toxins that the kidneys would eject through your urine is, is going into that. So I carry my spare kidney round on a rucksack. So it's extremely restrictive but it's keeping me alive so you know, the alternative isn't bare thinking about. Um, and I can't go far anyway because I've got to remain within an hour of the hospital uh, in case I get the call. So, you know, every time I say it's, it's tedious, boring, gets on my nerves, but it's saving my life. So, but it is tedious. Yeah, the whole, my whole day is revolves around, you know, doing the dialysis. On the critical care ward, Bill is showing no signs of recovery. It's now time for the medical team to raise the subject of organ donation with his family. Uh, you know, I've had a look at him today, I've had a look at the scans. Given the extent of the brain injury that he's got, he wouldn't want it to have survived in a, in a, in a condition. I, I think actually you know, there's no chance of him of surviving, but and usually you've, you've obviously approached us about the fact that he had very clear wishes about organ donation. You approached us about that, I know. And I'd obviously like to introduce you to Michelle, who's our specialist nurse for organ donation. She'll be able to answer all your questions that I'm sure you have. Is that the letter that you have? Yeah, he, he registered the other week. Oh. Let's okay, just has been. Oh, bless you. <laughs> he wanted... He wanted to do this, this important. Yeah. That's all the what would be looking at um, being able to donate, which would be liver, which obviously is going to save yeah. somebody's life, and oh, kidneys, yeah. which take two people off dialysis. So they're amazing gifts. I think it's a wonderful thing knowing that he wanted to help others. Mm -hmm. I really do. It's the best thing, well, yeah. the best outcome under the circumstances. Mm -hmm. You'd be thrilled. Dad had talked about organ donation. It's the last serious conversation that we'd had, not knowing that in a few weeks' time that was going to have to happen. It was his decision, and um, I wasn't going to challenge it because it was his decision. Specialist nurse Emma. Will be overseeing the process. Right. Yeah, it's ready, I think. So, when everything's ready and we're ready to, we're ready to stop. They'll, um, one of the doctors will come in and they'll take the breathing tube out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when his heart stops. Okay. We'll tell you at any point you want us to stop. Right. I know that you don't, but I just have to make you. You know, this oh, is still. Is it is what he wants. And you're doing a very amazing, brave thing for him. He's doing it. Really? I know. <laughs> but you're helping him. <laughs> it 
was OK until they turned all the machines off. I, I think I would have coped with it a lot... a lot worse if I hadn't have had the transplant to, to focus on. It's, it's like he still had a job to do. Even though he couldn't do anything, he was still doing something. He was looking after those organs until they could be given to somebody else. Someone who received such a generous gift from an anonymous donor is Kimberly. Hi. Hi. How are you? She's about to undergo a test to check how well her newly transplanted lungs are working. It's nice and gentle breathing for me. When you're ready, sharp breath all the way in. Blast it out. <gasps> keep it going, 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 keep it going in. When you are empty, breath in, well done. Kimberly's cystic fibrosis has meant she's rarely had a lung capacity of more than 30%. It's looking good. There's a definitely a good increase in, compared to last time. That was you in August. What percent lung function have I got now? So you're working with um, 71 and 70, so 67%. Oh, my God. That's a massive change. I'm happy that you've got your transplant. Thank you. <laughs> Isn't it lovely that she was yeah. done? I can't ever remember having a lung function that good. I don't think I have. So, <laughs> I'm in shock. <laughs> really shocked. Are you pleased? Yeah, so pleased. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty much happy. amazed. <laughs> I'm happy for Thank you. <laughs> Time to check in with her consultant, Dr Martin Carby. There's a chest x-ray before for your operation. There are lots of shadows in this x-ray. There are lines and there are, there are rings here and there's some mottled shadowing, which, which are all indications of, um, of widened airways which are plugged with mucus, which is the problem that you've had before your transplant. And if you compare that to your CT scan that you've just had of your new lungs, the appearance of those lungs is much more uniformly black, filled with air, without great big holes in them. It's crazy. But it's much more healthy looking lung tissue as opposed to looking a bit like Swiss cheese, which your old lungs did. Okay. Really happy for you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'll leave us have some time together. I'll see you before you go again. Okay, thanks. All right, bye bye for now. Thank you. Oh, it's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Yeah. She's just done fantastically, really. I'm so happy for her. She's you know, just a few weeks after her operation and she's going home and hopefully this is just the start of uh, a new life for her. I think the change in arrangements for organ donation in Wales will potentially have a very positive effect and hopefully we'll see a continuing increase in organ donation which will allow uh, my team to carry on giving people the benefits that we've seen for Kim. <laughs> After her life-changing surgery, Kimberly is finally leaving hospital and will continue her rehabilitation at home. At the University Hospital of Wales, a special delivery has arrived. It's a donor kidney for transplantation. Looks reasonable. That's, that's a, it had a very good function in the donor, so... This kidney has been best matched to a recipient. And it's good news for Robin. I was, I was just about to go to lunch and uh, I stood up, tied my shoelaces up and the phone went and told me they may have a kidney for you and it straight into panic mode. And, uh, that she just logged off from work and I uh, told my colleagues I'll see you tomorrow if it doesn't go go ahead or in two months time so I'm gonna have my normality back in my life you know, not tied to a dialysis going back and forth every four hours so yeah mixed emotions <laughs> blind panic mainly <laughs> Performing the transplant today is consultant surgeon Mike Stevens 
won't be long. We'll just get back down to this, just set one or two things up, and then, right. and then we'll come up for you. So, okay. Minutes, so, so I suspect. Okay. Good night. Okay. And we'll have a chat with you after this. Okay. Okay. No gin and tonic before. Best not to. No, probably not for not. me or you. Both. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> probably best not for me as well. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, okay, right. thanks Mike. See you a bit later then, yeah, okay? okay. Cheers. He was similar to what we usually see with uh, transplant patients, that sort of mix of apprehension and excitement. Um, always tend to be very nervous. Um, but we should have been waiting quite a long time for this day to come. One generous benefactor can save and transform up to nine lives through the gift of organ donation. It's a decision that Bill's family have made, and the surgical team are now in place for retrieval. Fusion's on. Okay, it's running well. Specialist nurse Emma will be coordinating in theatre. His kidneys have been accepted. I think his family are just happy that he can do anything, so... That's good. So I just spoke to her, so she knows that. Let's give it out. Let's give it to you. Ureters. Blanches tied. No blanches tied. No blanches. Okay, left kidney. Knowing somebody else is going to get help as well, you know, and they're going to receive a kidney, it just it makes it all all the you know the work that we do it makes it worth it. Right kidney. In the UK, there are around 6,500 patients on waiting lists for organs. Today, two of them will receive some incredible news. They probably would have been getting a phone call first thing this morning to say, come to hospital, you know, we found you a, a kidney. And so, yeah, li you know, life-changing for these people. Absolutely life-changing. The kidneys will now travel to the recipients and be transplanted within a few hours. It's all only possible because of Bill's gift. It's made losing him easier because it's like something good has come out of it. And I can't think of any other circumstance when someone dies that something good comes out of it. It's quite a negative final thing. Whereas for Dad, it still doesn't feel final because he's parts of him are living on in someone else. Bargoid, Kimberly's getting used to life at home with her new lungs and drugs regime. Let's find them all. <laughs> kind of dedicate an hour or two to, to do it, organise everything. I think I've lost the next one. Oh, there we go. I'm diabetic through cystic fibrosis as well. Um, my uh, liver disease hasn't changed since I was a kid, luckily. And then we've got the anti-rejections. So every day I take my anti-rejections at 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. It's important to make sure that you take them at regular times. And that's all of them. <laughs> well, that's all of the tablets anyway. Is that just for today? Yeah, that's just today's. I think a lot of people, when, when I've had my transplant, have just thought, oh, so you, you're cured now. And it's not that. You've got, to maintain, you've got to maintain yourself and you've got to keep yourself well. You've got to keep doing the treatments and take care of yourself, really. It's not just, um, it's not just an easy fix. It's a lot of hard work. But you go into it knowing that you've got to do that. It's the simple joys of life that you miss out on and you only realise when you're feeling well enough that, God, I couldn't have done this before. And it does hit you a bit hard, so, yeah. <laughs> Two 
Forest Fish. Consultant surgeon Mike Stevens is an hour into transplanting Robin's new kidney. So what we've done so far, we just prepared the vessels that we're going to put this onto, essentially, and uh, we uh, will um, get the kidney prepared earlier. And uh, it's like a cooking show, isn't it? <laughs> and keep the time as short as we can. So we stitch the vein to the vein to begin with, and then um, kidney artery onto the, uh, onto Robin's artery. And once we've done that, we'll release the blood into the kidney, so we'll perfuse the kidney again, we'll see what, how, how it looks. Okay, time down, time of reperfusion. 8.45. On, I'll hold it. I'm not sure. It looks quite nice. So we like to see a nice sort of uniform pink colour all the way around the kidney which we've got here. Yeah, it's pretty good so far. So the kidney's now got a blood supply. The last bit for us to do is to join the ureter, the water pipe, up to the bladder. We have a bit of urine there actually, which is a good sign. Often a bit sleepy to begin with these types of kidneys, but in the longer term it should function well. So make a big difference to Robin. This is what organ donation is about. I think it's really difficult for people to understand the difference that it makes until you see people like Robin and you see the difference that it makes to them. Um, and see what life was like for them before and then how it changes afterwards. And you can only appreciate it really by seeing the other half of the story. So it's there.